welcome back. So this little spacer here, you've just seen me make. It allows me to replace the haphazard stack of washers I had placed under the selected drum detent roller. And to be fair, I kind of had to replace the stack of washers, seeing as I had a lathe and a bunch of stock on hand. And as you can see here, it functions perfectly. And here you have a perfect example of a 2D pocket toolpath in Fusion 360 using a zigzag ramp. So the tool is consistently moving down at a 2 degree angle. As you see here, it's always good practice to measure the part before removing it from the chuck, as if you were to put it back in to remove more material, it wouldn't be running concentric. And let's see what happens. Place that in there. Grab something to drive it home with. It's got a nice machined end on it. Square this off the back edge of the table. So the whole point behind all that was before the ball centers here were wrong. I must have made that mistake a long time ago. I must have measured it all wrong or anyways, it doesn't matter now. So I had to bore this new hole at the correct ball center, press in the bush and then bore the bush in the mill. The reason I did it in the mill was because I don't have a boring bar small enough. So I've added that to my list of things to get. And now this fits in perfectly and it works like it should. The 12 mm four flute high speed steel roughing end mill was the longest most rigid cutter I had for this op. It wasn't perfect as it's not center cutting. So the name of the game was to just take plunge cuts with a one mm width of cut to make room for the oil pump drive sprocket. This was the quickest and easiest way as I just jogged the mill manually. And the point of that was to create some clearance in here for the oil pump drive gear. I'm not going to use this exact one because it's a bit munched, but that'll live in here like so. And this didn't fit in before, so it's got adequate space now to drive the oil pump, which is good. And I still have to drill the hole through um, and then put a bush in for the shaft that drives the oil pump that attaches to that sprocket. So at the moment I'm waiting on two of these. Uh, they should come in mid-May from China so I can't start putting the crankshaft together until my rods show up so I know the OD of the original pin so I can manufacture a new pin and have it ground to the same dimensions. I'm also waiting on a spare cylinder. So 
not the cylinder. This is from a uh, 110cc. But I've got an aluminium cylinder with a liner coming. So I should be able to cut it here and here. And either use some sheet or a 14mm flat bar. And widen this portion by 14mm. As you can see here, the lower cylinder is actually... 14 millimeters wider than the upper cylinder to account for the width of the extra connecting rod. I'll also have to do the same on the head by cutting down here and widening the cylinder head cam chain tunnel by the same amount. And I will also have to make a 14 millimeter spacer to go on here so the cam sprocket is spaced out the correct amount so the chain isn't going through any funky angles there's a couple ways i've thought about doing this this is probably the easiest way it does involve welding but the other alternative is i place this on the mill machine off this whole face do the same here on the cylinder. We'll cut this off. I could make a one piece cover that would go from here all the way down, but yeah, it seems like a lot of faff at the moment. So I'll go with the welding option for now because that's what other people do and it's tried and true. So we'll see how that goes. So there's really not that much I can do in the meantime while I'm waiting for parts, potentially Manufacture the cam chain tensioner, drill these holes out to the correct size, and drill the hole through here, and here, and this hole here, for the gear selector linkage stopper bolt. The holes around here for the clutch cover. They, are, they aren't going to be drilled until the clutch is actually mounted because I can use the center of the clutch and the kickstart shaft to locate the cover. And then from there, I can use a transfer punch, mark the location of all the holes, and then go through and drill and tap all of the holes. And just as I was editing this video, thinking this would take a long while to get here, the cylinder showed up. So this only took about a week, which was a lot quicker than expected. And we got ourselves aluminium cylinder with a steel, iron, whatever liner, piston ring. Gudgeon pin, circlet, and a piston. Awesome. Let's put all this in the toolbox for safekeeping. I love this. One of the perks of buying a big ball kit from China. They lie. Keep the law enforcement happy.